Hi, this is Little Wolf playing games while rambling incoherently into the microphone. Why? Well, just because I can, and I continue with Portal with the developer commentary on. Quad safety is one of many enrichment center goals. The Aperture Science High Energy Pellet seen to the left of the chamber can and has caused permanent disabilities such as vaporization. Please be careful. Apparently vaporization does count only as a disability uh, in the eyes of GLaDOS. Now it's actually interesting to me because this ball is the exact type of, you know, I don't know, weapon or tool that the Combine use uh, in Half-Life 2. So it makes me wonder whether uh, it's actually Earth technology developed by Apetra Science and whether the Combine uh, only appropriated it um, for their purpose rifles uh, to use on Earth because, ob <coughs> excuse me, because obviously the way the Combine works uh, they rely heavily on whatever resources and technologies uh, are found on the um, on the particular world they are trying to uh, to conquer. For example, they utilized a lot of creatures from Zen uh, as basically slaves, uh, headcrabs, uh, headcrab zombies, uh, vortigaunts mo most uh, most um, um, numerously. Unbelievable. You. Subject name here. Must be the pride of. Subject hometown here. To make puzzles deeper than just teleporting to the exit, we had to include surfaces that won't hold a portal, which are formally introduced here. We experimented with several surface designs before we settled on this one, whose visual noise and reflectivity make it easy to identify at a distance. devices are required on all mobile equipment. However, alarms and flashing hazard lights have been found to agitate the high energy pellet and have therefore been disabled for your safety. Good. Now use the Aperture Science unstationary scaffold to reach the chamber lock. <laughs> unstationary scaffold is also uh, quite a uh... And quite a funny uh, synonym for this kind of moving platform. Originally, these scaffolds ran on electrified tracks, but crafty playtesters would hop along the rails to the exit, bypassing the puzzle entirely. We tried to solve this by killing players as soon as they touched the rails, but that solution ended up being too much of an overcorrection as even skilled playtesters were getting frustrated by these one-hit kills in the more complex puzzles later in the game. Making the scaffolds run along immaterial beams of light solved both problems. Hmm. Okay, so I've apparently uh, two things here. Apparently I've made a fool of, of myself because I seem to think that a scaffold is a, a vertical... Um, like... Uh, it's a vertical construction uh, made for covering heights, like for example, uh, when, when they are uh, when there is construction work um, on a building. But apparently, I'm wrong because uh, the developer also clearly referred to this as a scaffold. So that makes me a little bit confused because I'm no, no longer sure what does that word exactly mean. But that's pretty much irrelevant. It's on, only a little bit embarrassing. Uh, what he was talking about was also interesting because it seems that originally uh, a lot of players when back when this was uh, an ordinary rail a lot of players were uh, foregoing the use of portals entirely and just jumping around <laughs> which is also interesting you know to hear about those problems the developers were having with basically players being too clever for their own good
please know that we have added a consequence for failure. Any contact with the chamber floor will result in an unsatisfactory mark on your official testing record, followed by death. Good luck. <laughs> I actually wonder how much of those uh, test chambers were completed uh, prior to GLaDOS uh, going mad uh, because obviously this doesn't seem like even disregarding the obvious uh, ethical uh, quandaries uh, involved with with killing your test ch test subjects it doesn't really seem that efficient because obviously you would, you would run out of people uh, pretty soon if they died every time they failed the task uh, but to be honest, it, it wouldn't take uh, that much effort to construct this death trap because the only thing you need to do is pour this kind of, I don't know, acid or something on the floor. So it's definitely possible that it used to be a normal uh, test chamber and it has only been altered after uh, GLaDOS went insane. Uh, okay, I, I get it now. Even though layering player training was a design goal from the start, we still ended up introducing some concepts too quickly. For instance, this used to be the first energy ball redirection puzzle. Playtesting revealed that this puzzle introduced too many new concepts at once, which ended up frustrating a lot of playtesters. In response, we inserted two test chambers before this one to make the energy ball redirection training more gradual. Yeah, this, this I can definitely see uh, as being a problem even for someone who uh, is familiar with games, like it's uh, it's good form to first introduce uh, the energy ball uh, and what it does, like uh, the simple fact that you need to uh, fit it into the slot before uh, before conducting any kind of more um, more uh, complicated puzzles with actually redirecting it using multiple portals. previously talked about how we handle static portal collision, but collision with moving objects on the other side of a portal is a completely different and equally hard problem. Walking onto this scaffold was a very iffy proposition for the very first few months of development. We solved the problem of colliding with these dynamic objects by cloning them. Oh, damn it. I didn't expect... well, I probably should have because I was ending the level, but I sort of... Um, cut off GLaDOS there, which is a shame. We previously talked about how we handle static portal collision, but collision with moving objects on the other side of a portal is a completely different and equally hard problem. Walking onto this scaffold was a very iffy proposition for the first few months of development. We solved the problem of colliding with these dynamic objects by cloning the objects from one portal to the other and strictly controlling what objects are allowed to collide with each other and how they're allowed to collide. Mm. Again, I don't quite understand what he's talking about, but I, I imagine it has something to do with uh, like uh, momentum uh, of objects and your character when going out of the portal, because I can imagine, uh, for example, the scaffolding actually killing you uh, if you collide with it uh, going, uh, going out of one portal into the other. Mm, it's definitely something that seems uh, mm, possible in a game like this. The Enrichment Center regrets to inform you that this next test is impossible. Make no attempt to solve it.
Because our test chamber environments were simple. Center apologizes for this clearly broken test chamber. Okay, okay. Because our test chamber environments were simplified for training purposes, we created visual hotspots within the rooms to guide players' attention. The design is essentially a balance between round objects and sharp objects. The sharp objects representing Once background again, elements, the and the round objects offers such as its most doors and movable props, on the comprising our points of visual interest. Test environment. Okay, shut up, I'm trying to listen to the commentary here. For the first few months of development, we rendered the views through portals to two off-screen textures. This approach was easy to implement, and was compatible with a wide range of graphics hardware. Unfortunately, this method was incompatible with anti-aliasing and consumed a large amount of video memory in order to handle recursive views through several you, portals. We would quit now. Because of these disadvantages, we switched to a system which renders portal views recursively into the frame buffer with the aid of the stencil buffer to isolate pixels corresponding to a given portal. This is a more effective scheme because it is compatible with anti-aliasing and does not consume any additional video memory for off-screen textures. No one will blame you for giving up. In fact, Quitting at this point is a perfectly reasonable response. Fantastic. You remain resolute and resourceful in an atmosphere of extreme pessimism. <laughs> Again, I, I didn't understand, um, well, pretty much anything and that the last commentary note was talking about, because to be honest, I have zero experience and zero knowledge about actual uh, like graphic design uh, I don't even know what anti-aliasing is uh, so <laughs> talking about it in detail is sure to confuse me Okay, that's a little bit too easy uh, of, a, of a way to introduce a new concept, I guess. Uh, but then again, first of all, I did play this once before, and even though I don't remember the exact specifics, I do remember the way the game works in general, so it might be a little bit hypocritical of me to say. Portal momentum ended up being the hardest concept to convey. For this series of puzzles, which went through more design iterations than virtually any other part of the game, we introduced the idea of redirecting your momentum using portals, slowly, step by step. We even have the AI voice pretty explicitly explain the elements of the puzzle, something we avoided throughout most of the rest of the game. That's actually one of my favorite mechanics, um, you know, uh, retaining your momentum which, while jumping from one portal into the other, because it lets you to do those cool jumps. Spectacular. You appear to understand how a portal affects forward momentum, or to be more precise, how it does not. Using gravity to fall into one portal so that you come rocketing out the other portal, a skill we call flinging, was another difficult concept to train. We designed a specific visual cue, a pushed out concrete block with checkerboard tile above a pit, to indicate to players that it's time to use the fling maneuver. Repeated several times, this cue helps players associate pushed out concrete slabs with flinging, in much the same way that players learn to associate cubes with buttons. Yeah, and this does look uh, sort of like a, uh, you, you know, a ledge of a, or, a, or like a trampoline or something, you know, on a pool. Well, you can say my... Uh, 
my expectations were subverted regarding the placement of the portals, which I guess was totally the point, uh, you know, to teach you that sometimes uh, you have to look for, an, for a place high up to place your own portal and then jump into the one that was already provided for you uh, so that the player learns that you are not, not always pigeonholed into the same exact setup. Momentum. A function of mass and velocity is conserved between portals. In layman's terms, speedy thing goes in, speedy thing comes out. <laughs> oh damn it. That didn't... That didn't quite work. Originally, these exit portal surfaces were static geometry in the final position, but playtesters stubbornly refused to look up to find them. This is another example of the classic game design problem of coaxing players to look up. By putting the portals on moving pistons, we were able to start them in a position that players were more likely to see. Hmm. It's actually interesting. I never thought about it, and I never really checked if I really don't look up when playing uh, FPS games, but it might be because of a number of reasons. First of all, uh, from what I understand, the oldest uh, FPS titles actually only had the um, the horizontal axis, so basically you only you only had the possibility to look around, but not up and down. So, if somebody uh, grew up playing those older titles they might have been more used to just uh, look around instead of up and down uh, but also like mm, in everyday life uh, you probably mostly also just look in the horizontal pr plane although I guess it's a little bit different in my case because uh, I have a slight health problem with my legs so um, I, I trip a lot and uh, it's uh, customary for me to uh, walk uh, looking down at my legs to avoid tripping over something or or my own legs actually because that also does happen but but even then I probably don't look up very much and that's what they were talking about because obviously uh, even in FPS games you are much more inclined to look down uh, like it seems maybe more natural because your way your head sort of well head you don't really have head but you know what I mean uh, when you look forward it's it's often sort of forward and down at the same time uh, as opposed to this kind of position which does really tell you uh, where you're going The Enrichment Center promises to always provide a safe testing environment. In dangerous testing environments, the Enrichment Center promises to always provide useful advice. For instance, the floor here will kill you. Try to avoid it. <laughs> that's very useful. Although that's not necessarily truthful either, because uh, that's not the floor. And that's some kind of a li liquid that was poured onto the floor. We found that rather than looking into portals to see where it went, playtesters would often leap blindly to their doom. In response to this observation, the moral of this puzzle is, look before you leap. The safe orange portal is out of the player's view from this balcony. That forces them to peer through a portal to see it, which trains players in their remote viewing capabilities of portals. Interesting. And that's also, also definitely something I'm personally guilty of, uh, because I seem to remember uh, back when playing this game, uh, that that I used to, uh, you know, just run around wildly and die a lot.
okay, so that I did power it up. Originally, a weighted button was used to open the far door, but playtesters so strongly associated boxes with buttons that they'd get stuck searching hopelessly for a box. We changed the big button to a pedestal-mounted push button, thus removing the box association. But playtesters still had trouble realising they needed to shoot a portal through the door. Adding a ticking timer sound when the door was open cued players that the puzzle expected them to act during that time, which solved the problem. Hmm. That was also interesting, you know, uh, 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 them talking about even such a minute detail as a timer sound and how it changed the perspective of the players. The device has been modified so that it can now manufacture two linked portals at once. As part of an optional test protocol, we are pleased to present an amusing fact. The device is now more valuable than the organs and combined incomes of everyone in. Subject hometown, here. <laughs> it's definitely amusing. Uh, although, uh, now that I think about it, it's kind of weird that it was a complete separate portal gun and then it somehow combined with the previous one that I already had. You'd think it would be some kind of a crucial component that allowed you to shoot two portals, but instead you had two actual portal guns and then they sort of merged into one. This room is designed to build anticipation for the big moment when players finally get the fully powered portal gun. The puzzle path brings you in a circle around the device, so that it's virtually always in sight, right up until you grab it. Yeah, and I think it's like uh, the half point of the game or something uh, by now, and you've only just uh, got the full capable capability of the portal gun, which sort of uh, confirms what I was talking about earlier, that uh, in truth, Portal 1 is more of a proof of concept than, in, in, than anything else and an extended tutorial uh, for what I believe will come, you know, the true challenge in Portal 2 which again I have never played as opposed to this one but I do own it and I do intend to play it eventually Get repeated, fling yourself fling into space <laughs> and again this is one of those moments in which they sort of explicitly tell you what to do. So I must imagine that would uh, that would uh, that have been that has been a difficult place for the uh, for the um, beta testers uh, to understand what to do in. So then the developers resorted to the uh, to Glados basically uh, directly telling you what to do by reminding you of the fling mechanic. Player training doesn't always stick especially after the introduction of a big new concept. For instance, after they had acquired the fully powered portal device, playtesters often forgot about the fling maneuver. Since it's such an important skill, this puzzle was designed to reintroduce the idea of flinging. Yeah. Oh. There's actually, several steps. Just jump across. It's <laughs> kind of hilarious. I wonder if she intended to say something else and it just came out sounding like a celebratory shout for you.
Now that you are in control of both portals, this next test could take a very, very long time. If you become lightheaded from thirst, feel free to pass out. An intubation associate will be dispatched to revive you with peptic salve and adrenaline. Okay, good to know. Oh damn it, I didn't quite work the way I wanted it to work. When we moved from largely placeholder art to our final visual design, this was the first level to get a facelift. We chose this map because it had many of our gameplay elements integrated into a relatively small space. The test chamber art direction was designed to make everything appear purposefully placed. The simple design helps focus players on the puzzles. It also provides a nice contrast to the later, much less sterile behind the scenes environments, which contributes to a clear sense of progression. For your own safety, do not destroy vital testing apparatus. Okay. To the commentary before I leave. This is the first map in which we experimented with solving the puzzle in as few portal placements as possible. We tried to fit that concept into the story mode, but were never quite able to sell it. Instead of abandoning the idea altogether, we added the concept to a series of post-game challenge maps. Hmm. I don't remember if I ever played those. As part of I'm the not sure if I will. Required test protocol, we can no longer lie to you. When the testing is over, you will be missed. <laughs> yeah, I will be missed because they intend to kill me. A problem we came across with virtually any puzzle involving boxes and doors was that the players could portal the boxes to the other side of the door, thereby trapping themselves in a room with buttons but no boxes. We set up special triggers to detect and handle these cases, and then added the box delivery tubes to ensure players could always be supplied with the required tools. So again, that's interesting because I could very, very well imagine in an older game it would totally be possible uh, to softlock yourself by uh, proceeding in such a strange way that you would be unable to finish the puzzle and you would have to reload. But it seems that in Portal they've taken uh, like extreme care to prevent that from happening, which is definitely both appreciated and interesting to hear about. Subjects intending to handle high energy gamma leaking portal technology must be informed that they may be informed of applicable regulatory compliance issues. No further compliance information is required or will be provided, and you are an excellent test subject. Okay, that didn't that didn't quite work the way I wanted it to. This didn't either. We designed this room to draw the player's eyes to the box. The light from the observation room casts horizontal shadows that point at the box, which is directly lit by a warm light from the ceiling. This warm light helps the box stand out against the predominantly cool test chamber lighting. The varying size squares of the off-limit surface 
also oh, no. help direct the player's attention upward. Okay. This is a great spot to appreciate the recursive nature of portals. If you place a portal on each side of this hallway, you'll notice the portals seem to go on forever, similar to the effect you get in a Hall of Mirrors. In actuality, we support a maximum of 9 recursive portal views without any chain of portals. We achieve the impression of infinite recursion by copying part of the previously rendered frame onto the final portal in the recursive chain. It's not perfect, but it's inexpensive and effective. Okay, that's definitely interesting, because obviously mm, he's right. If you if they wanted to literally go ad infinitum, it would crash your computer. Uh, but that the illusion is uh, perfect enough, uh, you, you wouldn't be... I don't think you would even be able to see more. Like, for example, here I only see like one, two, three, four of them, maybe five. So it's still... It's still... Uh, less than the maximum nine that he was talking about. A few playtesters put a portal on the floor here and used the rising stair pit to skip the rest of the puzzle. We'll usually rework a level if playtesters discover a way to bypass chunks of the puzzle too easily. But in this and a few other cases where skipping ahead arguably takes more skill than solving the puzzle properly, we let the ninja solution stand. Hmm. I don't really understand what kind of solution he's talking about here which I guess proves that I am not as smart as, the, as those people that first a figured it out. A few playtesters put a portal on the floor here and used the rising stair pit to skip the rest of the puzzle. We'll usually rework a level if playtesters discover a way to bypass chunks of the puzzle too easily. But in this and a few other cases where skipping ahead arguably takes more skill than solving the puzzle properly. We let the ninja solution stand. Hmm, so something about uh, those stairs rising here? But I don't don't understand how that would have helped you. Oh, can I really... Hmm, it seems I can... Oh no, there's actually a, a, a grid here. I was thinking if maybe, maybe I could kill myself by going down here. It would be kind of strange because it's pretty much pointless. So I'm not even sure why this space exists uh, as a part of the level. Okay, I'll leave one here because obviously I'll need it once I find the energy ball. Okay, it's going to be a little bit more complicated perhaps because uh, hmm. Wait, what is <laughs> I'm a freaking idiot. Yeah, def definitely, definitely, I'm, I'm an idi idiot. Okay, so I need to... Wait a second. How would I... Transport. Nope, that's not the way.
Mm. Well, where did I... Ah, okay, and now I, now I need to place this one there. Oh, freak. No. No, oh, damn it. It uh, disappeared already. Chamber. I might, might actually look up uh, what's the alternative way uh, to solve this because I totally didn't understand uh, this uh, commentary node and it's interesting to me that the developers themselves were so impressed with this solution that they decided to let it stay instead of reworking the level. Okay, so I think this is a decent place to end this, the episode, so I'm going to end it here, and I'll see you in the next one.